Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I have something very special to show you that I made for my baby girl's room. Everything in her room is swan themed and I made this to store all her bows. We don't have a lot of bows yet, <laughs> so this was the perfect little place to store them. What you can see on your screen now is just me condensing all the cuts that need to be made on the same coloured pieces of paper. Like I've mentioned many times before, I am a bit of a budget crafter and I really try to save as much materials as I can when working with these things. So there goes my Cricut off to work starting to cut out all the pieces of paper. If you are wondering where I got this SVG from, you probably are if you're into SVGs because this thing is adorable, I got it from uh, 3dsvg.com or Dreaming Tree. They have the most beautiful designs and it really surprises me how intricate and detailed they are but how easy they are to put together. So here I am cutting up my Bloomfawn paper. It is just so beautiful and here are all the other sheets of paper. I used pink, greys, blacks and a little bit of white in this one. And now it's time to get started and glue everything together. As you can see, my table is covered in pieces, which was a little bit intimidating at the very beginning, but this all came together very quickly. The glue that I'm using to adhere everything together is just a children's PVA glue. It is all I have on hand when it comes to using these things, and it's pretty much the cheapest one that I can find. I know a lot of people who do paper crafts with cardstock and make these big 3D things tend to use like a sticky or tacky glue. I would say it's probably a lot better than this and probably sets a bit faster, but this is all that I've got and it does the trick. Some other little adhesives that I use in this project are double-sided tape where I just found it was a bit easier and my glue dots. There really isn't a pattern to what I use each of those for. I just tend to grab what is close to my hands and what I think will hold the pieces down. While I was putting all of this together, I made sure that I was doing everything in the right order and sticking the right pieces to each other by watching the tutorial on YouTube. I will put the link down below so that if you're interested in seeing how it's made in real time, it will be there. I made the foot of this and the little shelf in white cardstock, which you can see here, but I later changed my mind as they were the only really visible white pieces in this piece, so I changed them to grey. It was a little bit time consuming and if I wasn't so fussy, it probably would have been just fine, but if you're looking at the final product and notice there's a difference, that would be why. As you can see, there are a lot of pieces to this, and although I have sped it up and chopped out all the bits and all the mistakes that you don't need to see, this does go on for just a little bit. So I'll leave you with some music while I stick the majority of this cart together.
Now that everything is really starting to look like it's taking shape, it was time to get those beautiful lawn fawn papers that I had cut at the very beginning. I used these adhesive dots because these are the ones that aren't permanent when you put them on but will set later because I have a terrible habit of not lining things up perfectly on the first go and as you can see I did need to take that off and realign it. I really find these handy if you're not overly confident in putting things on perfectly the right time or if after a while of crafting your hands get a little bit wobbly like mine do. After putting the foot on the bottom and the little shelf on the side, my cart was nearly done. I just wanted to make it really pretty and add some of my favourite details. This little piece of fabric here was my daughter's very first onesie that we ever put her in at the hospital. And it kind of just stuck with me. The cute little designs of the swans, the way they were partially outlined, everything about it was just really cute. And so I have continued that throughout her nursery as I just love the design so much. To stamp the swans, I used the Lawn Fawn Jellyfish ink as I didn't want these to have harsh outlines. Most of the outline actually disappeared behind these Copic markers, so it was a little bit tricky to see where their eyes had disappeared to, but I think they turned out really sweet. I really love the gold outline on these too. I just think it just looks so soft. I don't use many dies. Um, in fact, I have a scan and cut. Not that I talk to it at the moment because it destroyed an entire sheet of images that I had coloured in, but I stopped buying dyes quite a while ago. I found most of my crafting budget was going towards dyes, and as handy as they are, my very few crafting dollars were going towards things that weren't as pretty and adorable as the lawn fawn stamps. So I just had to teach myself to cut very, very neatly. So that's how I get images like these swans, where the crown is attached to their head. A couple of other sneaky little lawn fawn dies have snuck into this project. These little hearts that I'm using were one of the dies that came with the mini pop-up box die set that cuts both the heart and its outline. You may have noticed that these little hearts were cut using my excess pieces of paper from the side panels. Nothing here in my craft space goes to waste. This would have to be my favourite part of the whole project, going through all the little sequins and sparkly things that I own and deciding what to stick on this to make it the most shiny thing <laughs> ever. <laughs> I had these little half pearls that I got off eBay a long time ago and they happen to be the perfect pastel pink and they fit perfectly on the wheels. I have been asked several times where I get all these tiny little pieces from. Most of them are from eBay or just the cheap shops. They're all very inexpensive and they all make such a big impact on crafts, especially ones like this. Just when I thought I'd added enough sparkle to this, I looked at the top and thought it needed just a little bit more. So I got out my Nuvo Crystal Drops. I would have to double check which colour I use for this, but it's kind of clear. And I added it to all the hearts. By this point of the day, you can see my shadow was getting in the way because it was night time. <laughs> so I had to stop filming for the day and let these set overnight. The next morning I got straight back onto it and did some little itty bitty swans. I thought this one needs babies, it's for my baby's room. So I coloured in these tiny swans the exact same way I did for the grown up swans, only I couldn't stamp an outline for these crowns that was way too big, so I had to draw it on myself. Once I had finished with the swans, I cut them out and put them on the little ponds with the big swans. I used the Distress Oxide ink Spun Sugar to stamp out the little ponds and it was the perfect match for pinks. I then adhered these little pond scenes onto each side of the cart. The sides were looking a little bit bare near the wheel and in the original SVG this is where a little candy sign was but I wasn't going to put that on this so I had to come up with something else and I thought maybe putting an M for my daughter's name would look really cute there so I used this Oliver's stitched ABC's dies to cut one black piece and one pink piece for each side using excess pieces from the side panels again. 
And there it is. My cart was finished. This looks so beautiful in my daughter's room. I cannot believe how well it turned out and how easy it was to make. If you are into SVGs, don't be intimidated by the SVGs on the site 3dsvg.com. They are actually really easy to put together and they all seem to have how-to videos attached to them. I really hope you enjoyed this project. I have many more exciting things planned for the weeks to come, so please make sure you subscribe and join me. Bye!